Hello and welcome to another Touch Plus tutorial. My name is Juan Novales, and today we're going to be going over physically upgrading your memory and video card on your computer. We'll be looking at both Mac and Windows and going into quite a lot of detail into how to do both. In general, this tutorial is for anyone who wants to upgrade their Mac or PC's memory or video card. However, it is more geared towards someone who is in media content creation. Uh, so whether you work with After Effects, Photoshop, uh, Premiere, another editor, or even Cinema 4D or 3ds Max, any of those software, this upgrade should definitely benefit you. Before moving on, I'd like to note that although you don't need to be a computer expert to go through this tutorial, if you don't know anything at all about what's inside your PC or Mac and you've never opened it up or looked at the parts of the computer or quite know how they work together, I do recommend you take a look at an article that I wrote uh, for AE Touch Plus a little while ago, here it is, uh, on essential upgrades to boost your system. In this article, I describe the inside of a computer and kind of how each part works together, the memory, video card definitely included, which are the two we're looking at today, and just I give an analogy on as to how it does work together. So it might be a good place to start before you continue. Otherwise you might be a little confused as to what exactly I'm talking about. So if you generally understand what your video card and memory are, then you should have no problems at all. One other thing, as I go along, I'll sometimes hit websites where the links are very long. So I'll put a shortened form of the links uh, on the bottom of the page usually. So just look for them and you should be able to follow my, my tutorial through to those websites. Now in this tutorial, I will be looking specifically at three different generations of Mac Pros the 2008, 2009, and the most recent 2010 edition of the Mac Pro, uh, as well as a PC as well. Now there are many different types of PCs, so I'll be looking in general how to tell what you have and how to upgrade that. Now I won't touch so much on the why each component increases the performance of your computer and applications. This is more about the how to install those specific components and find the right ones for your system. We'll begin on the Mac side and take a look at the memory and video card upgrading options and then move to the PC after that and take a look at the same. So first we need to figure out how much memory we do currently have so we can see how much more we want to add. Uh, so first to do this, one simple way is to go to the Apple on the top left and click on About This Mac. And very quickly, we can see that I've got 24 gigabytes of RAM installed, or 24 gigabytes of memory. Now, one general rule of thumb with memory is that you want to have two gigs for every processor core that you do have installed. So if I had a dual core processor, I'd want at least four gigs of RAM or memory. Uh, I happen to have two quad cores. Um, so this is the eight core. Uh, Mac Pro. So with that in mind, I'd probably I'd want to have at least 16 gigs of memory. I happen to have 24, so I'm doing pretty good in this one. Don't quite need an upgrade. Now I'd like to show you somewhere where we can see a little more information about what's going on memory-wise in the computer. To do this, and start typing in System Profiler. Now the Profiler gives you a nice little overview of all the hardware inside of your Mac. So the one we're interested in right now, the option is memory on the left. And you have a nice picture here of each slot inside your computer that can hold memory. And actually the Mac Pro has eight slots because I've got the, the eight core. If you just had the quad core, you'd only have four slots of memory inside. And so of the first set of four, only three are populated with four gig sticks. And of the second set of four, these three are also populated. So an easy upgrade for me would be to fill these two empty slots each with maybe another four gig stick in each one, which would bring my system up to 32 gigabytes of memory total. Uh, so I know some people would say that's overkill, but in general, you can never have too much RAM. So if you can't afford it, hey, more RAM is good. You'll be able to do a lot more uh, video work and rendering and utilize all those processor cores, especially with the brand new 12 core that's just come out. Now, I'm lucky enough to have four gigabyte sticks in each one of these slots. If you had uh, one gig sticks 
in all these and you wanted to upgrade majorly, then you'd have to replace all that memory. Luckily, however, um, many of the retailers will buy back your old RAM, so you can get a little bit of money for it if you got if you just got your system with uh, uh, three one gig sticks here and three one gig sticks here for a total of six gigabytes, and you want to do a major upgrade. Now, where do you buy your memory? Well, there's many online uh, retailers, including Apple itself, where you can buy more RAM. However, one I found to be particularly helpful and, and also a great customer service as well is Otherworld Computing which can be found at MacSales.com and all they do is Mac everything here is Mac related but in general uh, for upgrading Mac since there's only one of each model of a Mac it's pretty easy to match your memory to the specific model of uh, Apple computer that you do have so let's go here and click on this memory tab right here and uh, You'll see right here if you have an iMac, you know, you can click here or, or one of the MacBook Pros. However, since we're specifically looking at the Mac Pros, uh, let's click right here. And the next thing you want to do is identify which model of Mac Pro that you have so that you can get the correct corresponding memory. You'll see right here that uh, they're categorized by the year that each of the Mac Pros came out. So that's one way you can tell which one you have. However, just to be a little more precise, notice that each Mac Pro has their own number corresponding. So the one that came out in 2010 has a, is called the 5.1. The 2009 is called the 4.1. Whether you have the quad core version or the eight core version of that one, which I happen to have that eight core version right there. And uh, over here, if you got the brand newest one, you could have the quad, the six, the 8 or the 12, uh, which would correspond to the Mac Pro 5.1, but they'd all take the same memory. Now to tell, if you weren't sure which uh, model Mac Pro you had to be sure, it's fairly easy. Just switch back to the profiler where we were, and you want to click right up here on hardware uh, instead of memory where we were. And just look right over here, and you will be able to tell. And I can see right here that I've got the Mac Pro 4.1. Uh, so I know for sure which one I have. And I can go back to the website and uh, see the corresponding one right here. So with that in mind, I would click here and it would bring me down. And since I have the eight core, I'd be looking right over here. Now these are the two gig modules, four gig and eight gig modules. It depends on which modules I'd want to get. And over here you can see uh, how many gigs total you'd be getting. So this would be for one two gig module. This would be for two 2 gig modules, and so on and so forth. So, if I wanted 16 gigs, like I estimated, since I have an 8 core, 2 gigs per core uh, would make me want to have at least 16 gigs. So, with that in mind, I'd go over here and see that if I wanted to get 2 gig modules, I'd have to pay this amount for that amount. However, um, if I'm thinking ahead, and uh, I know that I really can't afford... I, I, I can't afford uh, 24 or 32 gigs of memory as of now, um, but I do want to put a little more in later. I might want to think a little bit ahead and buy the 4 gig modules instead. That way, I won't fill up all my slots with 2 gig modules and have to sell them and replace them again. So say, for example, like I do, I do I've, got, um, I've got 6 4 gig modules which leaves me with two free and then later when I have a little more money if I want to I can go ahead and put two more four gig modules in there uh, actually that'll be right here so two gig, two more four gig modules and that'll be pretty simple for me so it's a good idea to think a little bit ahead not just filling up all your slots with two gig modules like I talked about earlier with having one gig modules there's not much more you can go with one gig modules uh, if I really wanted to think ahead even further and I had a little more money, I could put the 8 gig modules in. Uh, so that would be actually just four 8 gig modules. I'd actually have four slots left, in which case later I could pump it up all the way to 64, which is pretty insane. Let's now take a brief look at graphics cards before we move on to physical installation. To find out what kind of graphics card we currently have installed on our system, let's go back to the system profiler where we explored the memory that was on our computer and look down the list and find graphics slash displays. Here we go. We now have a breakdown of the exact graphics card that I have installed, which is the NVIDIA Quadro FX 4800. 
Go ahead and take note of the card you have. That way, as we start searching, you'll know whether or not you need an upgrade. There are currently two mainstream video card technologies battling it out. There's AMD, formerly ATI, and NVIDIA. If you remember, the card installed on the system is an NVIDIA card. Now, AMD has its uh, mainstream line, which is the Radeon series, and its professional line, which is the Fire GL series. Likewise, NVIDIA has its mainstream brand, which is the GeForce, and its workstation higher class brand, which is the Quadro. There are other video card manufacturers. However, NVIDIA and AMD are the two biggest, and probably you have one of their cards in your system. As you'll see later when we take a look at the Windows side, most any AMD and NVIDIA card will work on a PC. It's very easy to get a compatibility. However, when it comes to Apple, the cards are not quite as compatible. There's only a select few number of cards that Mac OS will work with. And so with that in mind, uh, it's important to be very careful what you choose. Now, if you go to Apple's website, where we configure the Mac Pros, you'll see that they actually offer only the uh, ATI cards, there, the AMDs. ATI was bought by AMD, so if I say ATI, it means AMD as well. So basically, you have a choice of the 5770 or the 5870. So if your system has a 5770 in it, then that might be a nice little upgrade for you. Although the performance difference will probably not quite blow you away. It's not that huge of a step up. Although AMD makes great cards, and while they have their cons and pros just like Nvidia does, I do recommend going with an NVIDIA card at this time because of the fact that NVIDIA has a technology on board called CUDA. I'm not going to go too in-depth of what CUDA is, but basically it helps accelerate media in multiple creative applications, primarily within uh, Adobe CS5 Suite and specifically with Premiere Pro, allowing you to accelerate your timeline and uh, not have to render as often, even when you add effects as well. So from personal experience, having used the NVIDIA Quadro card, I definitely have a little bit of a lean towards NVIDIA and have enjoyed the performance I've gotten from it. Now since, for example, I use the Adobe Suite a lot in my daily workflow, I'm going to tend to look and see which cards will perform well with this particular package and then make my choice based on that, as the card I pick will benefit me in whatever software it is that I'm using. Also, if you want some more information on the acceleration that the CUDA technology built in the Quadro card offers, I would recommend taking a look at first this video from Adobe TV in which GPU acceleration is explained a little bit and shown in practical usage. And this is a very, very interesting video, so I highly recommend viewing it. And secondly, I would recommend Reading a couple articles, including this one, which is on B&H's website, on uh, Adobe CS5 and the NVIDIA Quadro line. Definitely give you a little bit of understanding uh, of the acceleration that you can get from these cards. Now that I've evaluated the criteria for my own specific uses, I will now go to the Adobe website, where there is a page in which they list specific cards that have been tested and work with the Adobe Mercury Playback Engine with NVIDIA's CUDA technology. Now you'll notice one other thing is that not all the cards are Mac and Windows compatible. As I said before, Mac OS video cards are harder to come by. However, when it comes to Windows, the, you have the pick of the litter. There's literally a plethora of them out there. Another nice thing about having a cross-platform card is that you can put it in either Mac or Windows machine and switch them back and forth easily. However, since almost all the Mac OS cards will also work in Windows, you are more so looking for compatibility on the Mac side than you are on Windows. So if the Adobe software is not your cup of tea, just remember, whether it's 3DS Max or any other software you use, just go to your manufacturer's website and most likely they'll have a system requirements page and have a list of tested and optimal graphic cards for you to look at. Once you've done this, we can go and purchase our card. There are many online and brick and mortar electronic stores that sell video cards that will be appropriate for your Mac. However, if you are shopping online, I suggest looking at a website that is very Mac centric, just like other world computing. This is very helpful, especially if you're new to upgrading, because everything here is Mac compatible. 
So if we're looking for video cards, we go to the video section, for example, and scroll down and find the section on video cards. And here we go. There's the familiar NVIDIA Quadro 4000 that we looked at on the Adobe site. And down here is the 4800. So if I was going to go NVIDIA, I could definitely take a look at those cards. But they still have those Radeon cards as well if you're interested in the Radeon side. Nothing wrong with that. By the way, don't feel stuck to this site. I found amazing deals on other websites, including Amazon and Buy.com as well. Just to be safe, you can copy the model number or the name of a card here that you like that you know is compatible with the Mac and paste it on another site. That way you'll know what you're getting. All right, let's go do some upgrading. We'll start with the 2009 Mac Pro model, or the 4.1 if you look it up in Profiler. We'll then look at what's different in the 2008 or model number 3.1 and the 2010 or model number 5.1. The only tool you should need for all this is a screwdriver. Next, you'll want to unplug everything from the back of your case. If you're not quite sure where everything goes, take a picture or maybe some video. And when you're done, it should be pretty easy to put everything back where it came from. Next, let's open the side of the case. First, lift the latch on the very back of the Mac Pro. The side of the case should slide right off. This is what you should see when you first open the case. We're going to be paying attention to these two sections of the Mac Pro. Down here is the memory and the processors, and up here is the video card and the other expansion slots. The current video card is right here at the very bottom. To remove it, you must first remove the bracket right here on the back. To do that, you must take out these two thumb screws right here. Now you may have trouble getting them off, they may be stuck. So you might have to get them started with a screwdriver just slightly like this. And then they should come right off. Next, we'll remove the video card. You'll notice there's a metallic bar down the center. You'll want to push this to the side as you gently pull the video card towards you. It should come out pretty easily. Remove the card and place it on a clean, static-free surface. There we go. Next, we're going to be replacing the card with this brand new Quadro 4800. You'll notice the bottom of the cards look identical and fit into the exact same slot. Something else to note is our brand new powerful Quadro card is twice as thick as our old card right here. So in order to install the card, you'll have to remove a metal placeholder slot right there. Just push it through and it should come right out. Our new video card requires extra power as well, and you'll notice the Mac Pro provides two power slots for the video card. Now ours only requires one, so you'll notice I've taken this cable right here, which came with my card and should come with yours, and I'm going to place it right in the back of the new Quadro card. Now the new video card interface should fit right where the old one came out. Also note the back area of the card right here. It will be hooked in place by this metal bar right in the middle of the Mac Pro. Now carefully insert the card into the Mac Pro and gently push it in, making sure to line it up with the slot. Now once you line it up, you'll want to pull back on the metal bar, like I mentioned before, which will be hooking the card in so that the card can get right into the slot, apply some pressure, sometimes it takes a little bit of lining up, and it should snap right in. There we go. Make sure it's secured. Now let's go back to that power cable we plugged in earlier. You see now why I plugged it in before putting the card in. It would have been a lot harder. Let's insert the power right in the back of the card. There, we're done. The card should line straight up and you should see it coming out the back of the computer ready for you to plug your monitors into. Now don't forget the two screws that you took out earlier. Make sure they're securely fastened. Next, we'll upgrade the memory. To do this, we need to remove the processor and memory tray. Pull back on the latches, and as you pull them out, the tray should slide right out, nice and easy. Just be very careful and place it on a nice, clean, static-free surface. Notice these two large metal heat sinks here and here. Those are the processors. I have the 8-core Mac, which means I have two quad cores. If you have the quad core, you'll only see one of these heat sinks. Now the memory is on the side of the processors here and here, and they correspond to the processor that they're next to. These memory slots correspond to this processor, for example. Let's take a look at adding and removing memory. You'll see these memory modules right here. 
To remove the memory, apply pressure on the tabs on the side of the memory and they should pop right up. It's a good idea to minimize contact with the memory module by holding it on the sides because dirt or static can ruin the module. Remove the rest of the memory as needed. Now you'll notice numbers corresponding to each of the memory slots, 1 through 4. When you populate the slots with memory, make sure you fill the slots up from first all the way to the fourth. For example, I've only got three sticks of memory, so I filled up the first three slots and left the fourth one open. Let's put them back in. To put them back in, open up the tabs on the slots on the memory you wanted to put back, and gently insert the memory, making sure to line up the tab in the center of the memory with the bar in the middle of the memory slot. They can only go in one way, so make sure you slide the memory in, and the slot lines up, and apply pressure gently on top, and the memory module should snap right in. There we go. Notice the tabs on the side have automatically snapped in. Let's look again on the second one. Put it right back in, line it up, apply pressure gently, and the tabs snap right in automatically. Make sure you're putting a nice, even pressure on top as you snap the memory module down right in. There we go. Now make sure that everything is properly seated, and also note that the memory on the other side, corresponding to the other processor, is changed out the exact same way. It's also a good idea to have an even amount of memory on each side. As you see, I have three sticks on each side. Each stick is four gigabytes, so I have 24 gigabytes of memory in my system. When you're done installing memory, put the tray right back into the Mac Pro. Make sure that the tabs are out, however, in the front and it should snap right in and then you can close the tabs and your Mac Pro should be ready to close up. Make sure to shut the latch in the back and your system is ready to be put back, turned on and should be ready to go. Let's move now to the 2008 3.1 model. You'll see that the latch opens just the same as the other one and the side comes right off. You'll notice the PCI Express expansion slot section is pretty much the same. We have our video card right here and the slots are pretty much identical. Notice once again how they correspond to the back of the computer. You can see that this card right here requires two power inputs instead of one. This board also has the power coming from towards the top and not the bottom as the previous one. Connecting them up however is the same. The processor section where we'll be replacing the memory is very different however. There are two individual trays this time, each with four slots of memory. To access and replace the memory, we'll have to remove each tray one by one. Just pull and they should come right out. Set them right down on a nice clean static free surface. Same with the bottom tray. Just pull gently and it should pop right out. From here, removing the memory is pretty much the same. Pull on the tabs on the side until the memory pops right out and remove it gently, making sure to hold on the sides to minimize contact with the memory module. You will see that the notch slot on the memory stick matches the one on the board. When you're putting in your new memory, make sure you line it up carefully, insert it, and put nice even pressure on the side till it snaps down securely and the tabs are securely down. Notice once again that each of these slots are numbered. They also coincide with the numbered slots in the system profiler, which we were looking at not too long ago. Also, it's a good idea to populate the slots from first till fourth. So if you only have three memory sticks, then populate the first, second, and third one, leaving the fourth one blank. If you only have two, then put them in the first and second only, leaving the third and fourth blank. You get the idea. Now let's put the memory trays back in very carefully. There should be a track on which it slides right inside and push firmly until you feel it snap in. Don't stop until you feel that snap as it goes into the slot in the very back. Same with the other memory tray. Insert it into the track, slide it back, and push it firmly until it snaps right into the back. There you go. It's a good idea to double check and make sure that they're firmly snapped in. The last of the Mac Pros we'll be looking at is the 2010 or model 5.1. For all intents and purposes, this new Mac is identical to the 2009 version with respect to memory and the video card. There are, however, a couple of things regarding the video card that are worth noting. 
The card is screwed to a plastic frame which stretches across and is secured in the back to keep the video card from moving or getting loose. To free the card, you must pull back on this plastic piece right here, which will move the metal bar that we've seen before back, thereby freeing the card in the back and in the middle where it hooks in to the slot. Once free, you can now remove and replace your video card with a new one. When you're done, don't forget to hook up your new card to the proper power supply if it needs it. For more information, check the video card's user manual. When you're finished, close it up and you're ready to go. If you installed your memory correctly, you should be greeted with this happy little message right here. If you didn't, then Apple is nice enough to bring up a dialog box that tells you the correct way to have installed your memory. In which case, open up your computer and try again. You can also bring up Profiler to make sure that your graphics card installed properly as well. Some graphics cards will require you to install drivers. A driver is software that helps hardware communicate with the operating system or your Mac OS. If this is the case, it will be included on a disk with your new card. Just follow the instructions. Alright, now let's leave the world of Steve Jobs for a moment and let's take a look at the Windows side. So how do we approach finding out what type of memory and what kind of video card we've got on a Windows machine or PC? Well, first, you have to look at what you've got. To do this, we've got to find some way of looking at our system information. And wouldn't you know it, if you go to Start, Programs, Accessories, and System Tools, what do you know? We've got System Information. Now, this is very much like the System Profiler on the Mac. However, I find it to be a little more confusing and uh, um, just just not as well organized, and I, I don't really like coming here. So what I recommend, actually, is getting a third-party system information tool which reads and organizes information on your Windows machine a lot better. And thankfully, there are many very good ones. Some are free, and some cost or have a free trial. Let's take a look at a couple and uh, take a look at what our system currently contains from there. We're going to take a look at three different system information tools because I want you to see that you do have a good amount of choice out there. These are three that I've used and definitely do recommend. The first one is made by a company called Piriform, www.piriform.com, and it's called Specky. By the way, they make a great cleaner for Windows, too. I do highly recommend it. I use it all the time. Uh, so back to Specky. It is probably the most minimalistic of the three system information tools and uh, definitely worth a look. This is, however, a free trial and you must pay to keep using it. However, I definitely recommend checking it out. The next one is made by a company called Oslogix, oslogix.com, and uh, also a very good company. They make a great defrag uh, for Windows as well. I like their defragger a lot. Um, but what we want here is their system information tool as well, which also is uh, has a free trial but does cost it's a little more detailed than specky at least for me it is and it uh it's well organized the last one is made by cpu id www.cpuid.com this one is totally free so there's no trials or anything feel free to keep using it however if you do find you like it i always love supporting the programmers as well to install and download just click right here once you install CPUID PC Wizard, go ahead and open it. And it will take a second to load because it's got to scan your computer. Now, I don't think I've gone over yet what a system information tool does. All it does is scan uh, the drivers and, and uh, other system files in your computer and uh, shows you exactly what you've got hardware-wise. It breaks it all down, just kind of lays your computer naked in front of you, and you can go through here and take a look at your motherboard, your processor, even take a look at temperatures and and just pretty much everything you have installed is right in front of you. Now, as freeware, sometimes icons and interface are not quite as attractive, but this is a very powerful system information tool. It pulls a lot of info. The other pay ones may look a little nicer, but this is still pretty great. So let's go over and take a look at this tab right here, which is a system summary. Here you have a quick snapshot of everything on your computer. You can see even that I'm running Windows 7. And up here, um, the things we want to pay attention to are the memory, 
which it says I've got four gigabytes installed right here and it tells me that I've got two sticks installed and we'll take a look at a little more detail of that in a second because we're going to be uh, looking for the right type of memory for my motherboard we gotta know who the motherboard manufacturer is and you can see up here uh, let's click on the main board tab right here you'll see it's made by gigabyte so let's take a quick note of that right here and right here we have the model number of my board right here so it even reads that right from the board itself there's even a little more information down here if you like uh, so we know that I have an EP45-UD3P once I've noted that as the motherboard let's take a look at my memory situation so if I click on the main board because the memory is located on the main board right here it says physical memory and so this is really neat because right here on the very top you can see that I have four slots of memory on my board it'll tell me I can also see that uh, I'm filling only two of the four slots so right here I've got a two gig stick and another two gig stick and if I scroll down further it's pretty neat because it'll tell me a lot more information about each stick so it even tells me that this memory stick is manufactured by Corsair brand so when I go to buy memory it might be nice if I match it with more Corsair although you don't have to put the same brand in as long as it's the same type and ex and here's a lot more information about the memory sticks themselves even speed and, and everything it's, it's great if you need more detailed information however what we need to note of most importance is of course the type of memory it is so uh, we're looking the, the information we're looking for is uh, that it's DDR2. You might have DDR3 or just plain DDR, but you need to see, see that it's DDR2. So memory DDR2. And also, the next thing we're going to have to find out from the manufacturer is how much memory our board can handle total. Now, it's nice to have two free slots, which means I could probably put in another uh, two gig stick on each one of these. So make it going from four gigs to eight gigs total. But I have to see that my board can actually handle eight gigs because some boards only have a certain amount of memory that they handle up to. So to do that, we'll have to go to the Gigabyte website or whoever your board manufacturer is. But for now, we just know we need DDR2. Uh, we also need to know uh, what the memory speed is. Now, right here, you'll see that it's DDR2-800, and that's important to note. So DDR2-800 is the type of memory that we have. And you'll notice that it actually says 400 here, and the chip is, is DDR2-800, 800, 800 uh, megahertz in speed. Basically, the way that works is DDR's technology doubles the throughput uh, using both sides of the chip. You can look it up if you want to get more information on that. DDR is a predominant type of RAM used to pretty much all computers. Uh, there was a battle just like with the Blu-ray and HD DVD battle and DDR1, so most any computer you'll have will have DDR memory. Whether it's DDR1, 2, or 3 will depend on how new your computer is, as DDR3 is the latest at this current time. So, uh, the other thing I'd like to point out is that right here it says PC2-6400, uh, which is pretty much another name for DDR2-800. Uh, it should be sufficient to note just DDR2-800 when you go to look up your RAM. However, it may as well not hurt to look up PC2-6400, because it's pretty much just another name for that same speed. So let's go ahead and write that down as well. All right, so basically, becoming familiar with this section right here, we can see each slot in our motherboard and every one of the pieces of RAM that's installed will have corresponding information for it. And you have full access to that right here. Another thing to note also is that uh, this model number right here is, uh, the actually the exact model number of that stick of memory so if you just wanted to duplicate the same exact stick you could just take this and uh, look it up in the manufacturer website as well and just buy the exact same two sticks and populate that there that way you know exactly it's compatible but you, and once again you do not need to have the same brand as long as you have the same type it'll work just fine lastly let's look up what video card we have because nothing would be worse than buying a new video card and realizing that the current one we have is just as powerful so if you want to go over here to this little video tab right here and we've got all this information on our video card right here you'll see that the model is 
and NVIDIA GeForce GTX 460, which is pretty recent, so I probably would not be ready for an upgrade at this time. Um, however, you know, if you have, for example, the 120 or, you know, the 300 series, you might want to consider going up to the 400 series. Right now, we're up to the 500 series at this current time. Also, if you remember in the beginning when I talked about uh, compatible cards with uh, the Adobe Mercury engine that utilizes NVIDIA's CUDA technology, uh, you may want to consider grading one of those cards too if that kind of acceleration is important to you. So let's note what video card we have. For those of you who bought prepackaged systems and you know exactly what model number or uh, many of them come with service tag numbers such as Dell or maybe you bought an HP or a box system, um, if you do, uh, it should be pretty easy to go to that manufacturer website and enter your order number or your customer number or that service tag number and get all this information as well. But this should work on those systems just as well. If you do go to those manufacturer websites, however, uh, they may have a customer login, which would give you access to uh, a lot more tools probably regarding your system. And maybe they'd even offer upgrade options to make it easier if you don't want to deal with all this. So just want to make sure you were aware that that is an option as well. Also, like with any hardware, before opening up and messing with uh, anything, you need to double check that it won't void any warranties. Usually, memory and video card upgrades do not void warranties. However, you don't want to chance that, so I would double check. One more item worth noting uh, that will affect a very small amount of you, but I think is still worth mentioning, it will require us to go back to PC Wizard. And let's get back to the main board and physical memory. It's located right here. It says regular UDIM. Uh, DIM is just a memory module. Uh, and uh, U stands for unbuffered. Now, most of you who bought your computers in a re retail store or put it together and built it online at a gaming machine and uh, doubles the video editor, for example, will all be U DIMMs. Some of the higher end systems that use uh, server boards, uh, workstations, will probably say R DIM for registered DIM. So you don't really need to fully know what that means, but just make a note of it as it will come in handy later. Uh, one last item, and I promise we'll be done. Now, just notice real quick that we've got four memory slots. Uh, now, DDR memory is, uh, most of DDR memory uh, works best when it's paired with another one in uh, what they call dual channel uh, mode. Uh, they both work together to transfer more efficiently and faster. Uh, now, it's okay to install one stick, usually, of memory, uh, but it just works more efficiently when you have them in pairs. Uh, some of the newer DDR3 boards um, actually work in triple channel, which means they, are be they best work in threes. And those boards will actually have six slots. And so you'll probably see one, two, and a third one in another slot right here. Now, you'll have to check with your manual um, of your motherboard to see the best way to insert the memory. But just be aware that when they're sold and when they're put in, usually they're put in in, in twos uh, if it's dual channel. So these two work together, and then when you populate these two slots, they'll work in dual channel together. That should be it. Uh, so it may be something worth noting, but just know uh, in what configuration you have and double check your manual. And now to the reason why we've got the information on the board manufacturer and uh, product number of the board. Uh, it's very useful to have the manual for your board, which will have a specific section on how to install memory and video card for that matter. And for example, telling you in what, what are the best and ideal configurations for your memory, whether it's dual channel in twos or triple channel in threes. It also have the specific specs as well to your board. Just to have that as reference, uh, the best way is to go to the manufacturer website, in my case, Gigabyte. This is generally the same for most of the sites, but you want to find out uh, where it says either support or downloads, uh, something of that manner. And that will usually bring you to somewhere where you can enter the model number of your board. In this case, um, I see EP45 UD3P. So if I just paste it in there, uh, you see it gives me my board. Now, 
this may not be the case for all boards, but it turns out that mine has multiple revisions. It means that they redid the board several times. The only way to know for sure which revision you have, it might be in CPU ID, but for sure you're going to have to open the computer up. And there's usually a sticker with a model number on there. And just look for the little revision that it is. So I know that mine is Rev 1.1 because I took a look. And so when I click on there, I have access to the board. You can see that's what my board looks like. I can see the, the kind of processors and memory that it supports. But specifically, I wanted to look at the manual. So I choose my operating system. And you can see there's drivers and regular drivers for the board, but I want the manual. And here we go. Now most manuals are laid out pretty similarly. So just check out the table of contents and find the section on installing memory. And here it is. A very nice little diagram. So I will leave that to you. Just one more thing, just to show you how similar most motherboard manufacturer sites are. Let's go to another one, Asus, which manufactures a lot of great boards as well. And so find the section labeled downloads or support. It's usually the two keywords used. So just search around. And right here under uh, downloads is Asus downloads. And then you can uh, search for your product right here, or once again, type in the model number that you got from uh, CPU ID PC Wizard right here, and you can select manual. That's simple. Now, there are many places to buy memory and other electronics. Taking a look at Newegg as an example, you want to usually look under hardware, and you'll find it's pretty well organized. Go to memory. And this is where that uh, UDIM property that we talked about is to come in handy. Uh, as you'll see over here, regular desktop memory, like I said, most of you will have, is the UDIM. And the RDIM, uh, the registered memory, uh, as opposed to the unbuffered, which is what the U stands for, would be the server memory, as I mentioned before. So we're going to go to desktop memory. And from here, you just keep refining your search until you... Uh, find what you have so I could look under speed which is right here which is DDR2800 and find it right here DDR2800 or PC6400 like we wrote down so click on that keep refining my search now remember when we looked at the dual channel uh, this is where uh, that comes in handy many times they sell those sticks in pairs so if, for example, I wanted to put two 2 gigabyte sticks to fill those two empty slots in my computer and I looked in my manual, it was good to go. I could go ahead and click on here and find myself two matched pairs of memory. Now, another good thing about sites like this are always the ratings. They're very useful to tell you how good a product is and what people's experience are with them. Never, never underestimate ratings. Very important. So we see pretty much that the specs we wrote down are spelled out here quite well. We've got four gigs represented by two two gigabyte modules, and they are DDR2-800 or PC2-6400, BAM and BAM. And we already decided to use them, and they're dual channel, they're, they're a matched pair. Although, like I said, you could install one, but it just works better when they're installed in dual channel or triple if it's triple channel port. So I could go ahead and purchase this or keep looking for more options as well. Also, a real quick tip. You'll recall where I showed you in PC Wizard where your exact part number or model number of the memory was. Well, that's exactly the same as this model number right here, and each module has that model number. And most of these sites will allow you, if you copy this from PC Wizard, for example, uh, to search for that number. And bam, there we are. Another easy way to see exact compatibility for the memory that's currently in your board. I could populate those two extra slots that I have perfectly with, uh, with this search right here and know that it's compatible. Let's switch now to video cards. And you'll remember earlier, we took a note of what card we have, so let's keep that as reference. So when we do look at the list of cards, we'll know exactly what we want to upgrade to. And we talked about earlier, there's basically two different technologies, NVIDIA and AMD, formerly ATI, which makes the Radeon series. And these two chip manufacturers 
uh, pretty much battling it out, uh, both with their own set of advantages. And we talked a little bit about NVIDIA's advantages with the CUDA. Uh, but to get a little more of an idea of what maybe your uses might require out of a video card, check out the page with technical specifications for your software of choice that you use the most and want to get a boost on. For example, Adobe has this page right here uh, with tested video cards for Photoshop CS5. And you can see right here that my 400 series NVIDIA card is right here towards the top of the list. So I'm, I'm doing pretty good in, in, as far as the GeForce Consumer Series. So you can go ahead and do likewise with whatever software uh, is your software of choice that you want to boost on, whether it's After Effects, which has specs on video cards and tested cards as well, or even Premiere, which we looked at earlier with cards that supported the CUDA acceleration. If you use 3D apps such as Maxon Cinema 4D or Autodesk, whichever one, they all should have a system requirements page on their websites. Down at the bottom right here, you'll see that they list video cards that they've tested and support. So it may be worthwhile looking here. And once again, we'll see that my card is right here, the 400 series, towards the top end of the GeForce line. And so once again, I'm doing quite well. I'm pretty happy with the card I have in here. So once you've done some research and made a decision on the card you'd like to get, let's go back to Newegg or your equivalent hardware store of choice. And we'll look at computer hardware. And there it is, video cards and video devices. Pretty simple. Right here, we can refine our choice a little further. Desktop graphics is regular consumer graphics, which is still pretty powerful, more so on the gaming end. But they also do accelerate video work as well. And so like my 400 series would be in this section. And so those would be the uh, AMD Radeons or the NVIDIA GeForces. Over here in the professional graphics section will be the higher end cards, um, the Quadro series from NVIDIA or the Fire series from AMD, formerly ATI. So we'll look in the desktop graphics section and you can refine further over here as well. Uh, by company and to be sure you understand here these companies right here although there are many companies manufacturing cards such as Asus uh, and Gigabyte who also make motherboards uh, they're still making NVIDIA technology GeForce cards or let's find an AMD card right here right up here a Radeon an AMD Radeon card so they're using the, the chips there's only basically two chipset technologies that are mainstream which you have a choice between NVIDIA or AMD, even though they're multiple manufacturers. So don't get the manufacturers wrong from the technology on this part of the page. That's something that sometimes people get a little confused. So once again, you can seek out your card, look at the reviews, and decide on the one that works best for you. Or go with the cards that I recommended earlier. You can't go too far wrong with them. And they all support the Adobe Mercury Engine as well, and should be good on both Mac and PC. I always like getting cards that will work on both a Mac and a PC. That way you can interchange them. But if you're just staying on the PC side, don't limit yourself to that. You have a lot of choice to go with. One last thought over here. Earlier on, you noticed that for the Mac only products, I took you to Other World Computing. That's because Other World Computing focuses pretty much just on Macs. Although a lot of the stuff that works for Mac will work on a PC because they are using the same Intel chipsets nowadays. Other sites like Newegg definitely also do carry Mac memory right here. It's just a little harder sometimes to sift through here and find what you need uh, when some of the more Mac specific sites like Otherworld uh, gear you exactly to your model of Mac and to get exactly what you need without even having to know any other spe technical specifications except for which year Mac or model number of Mac that you have. Now that we've upgraded our Mac and learned about the right parts to buy for our Windows machine, let's get hands on and take a look at our Windows box. Now this is a custom PC build and you'll notice to get inside, just uh, look at your case and see if it needs to have either a latch opened or a screw on the back taken out. This one right here is a toolless entry, so it just requires me pulling the latch back and taking the side off. As we look inside, you should see that it looks very similar. For example, down here is the video card. It has the same exact PCI Express slot as the Mac did. And just like my video card on the Mac, it also requires extra power, 
which would come right from the power supply. The card is also held in by two screws, which you will have to remove and replace after you put in your brand new card. Once it's placed back in, you see where it comes out in the back and my monitors plug right in. Now, taking a look at our memory, you'll notice that it's not quite as elaborate or has its own tray as our Mac Pro did. But all the same, it's still a regular memory slot. Also note the similarly colored slots indicate the modules that are working in dual channel together for more efficiency as earlier discussed. And as you install your memory, and apply even pressure to the top of the module, you'll notice that the tabs snap in, securing the memory to the board. Now let's close up the computer, making sure that all latches and screws have been properly closed, and we will be ready to plug it in and see if everything worked properly. When you're done, Windows, unlike the Mac, won't put up a nice little message that tells you, hey, the memory's installed correctly, or let you know exactly how you did it wrong and how to fix it. So Windows uh, approach is more of the tough love style, so you're gonna have to look it up yourself. Uh, the computer may not boot, which means that one of your sticks was installed badly, or maybe it was a bad stick. So assuming the computer booted up okay, just open up PC Wizard again, go to physical memory, and just double check for yourself that the total memory is what indeed what you put in and that each slot is recognizing and if you see that you should be all set to go now unlike your memory which just installs and works your video card will need something called drivers drivers is just software that will let the computer operating system recognize and work with your video card properly now look at the instruction manuals that came with your graphics card as a driver disk should be included. If it's not included, you'll need to go to the manufacturer's website or chipset maker, which will either be AMD or NVIDIA. So on the NVIDIA site, look for driver downloads and enter the appropriate information for your graphics card. Then you'll want to pick the correct operating system you're installing it on. So for me, it'll be Windows. If you had a Mac and it was compatible, it would be the Mac OS. Same thing goes for the AMD website, just find the driver and support section and you should be good to go from there. An important note, in some cases, the graphics card will require you to install the driver before you install the card physically. The instructions should make this clear because in those cases, the operating system will not be able to boot or know what to do with the card without those software drivers installed. However, in most cases, you should be fine installing it after you physically installed the card. Well, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and the new performance from your upgrades. Once again, if you have any questions, please feel free to post them in the comments section. And I, or another community member, should be able to help you. For Tuts Plus, this is Juan Novalis.